In this video, we're going to talk about the parts catcher option. It's an option that works on most high slates. It's designed to catch parts after machining is complete on either the main spindle or the secondary spindle. From there, it drops the parts in the bin located on the front of the machine. This keeps the operator from fishing parts out of the chip conveyor or the chip bin. There are times when you need to adjust the stroke on the parts catcher depending on how far the parts catcher is from the face of the chuck on the main spindle or where you need to eject the parts on the secondary spindle. And also, when you want to change your position of how far the chute rotates in order to accommodate a finished part of a different diameter. First, let's look at how we adjust how far the parts catcher extends when it's coming in to pick up the part. Then, we'll look at the adjustment how far the chute rotates towards the chuck when it deploys. Close the door and press current command. Select devices, then mechanism, and scroll down to parts catcher. F2 and F3 are the commands used to set up the parts catcher location. F2 extends the parts catcher and rotate the chute to catch the part. The primary function of the F3 key is to extend the chute and allow the operator to make adjustments to the parts catcher. After you've used F3 to extend the parts catcher, you can use the F3 command to rotate the chute up and down to check your adjustment. These functions can only be executed with the door closed. So for example, command F3 and open the door. Use a 916 box wrench to loosen the adjustment bolt on the side of the mechanism and slide the assembly to the desired location within the four-inch slot and then tighten the bolt. Once you're finished with that, you can make the second adjustment with the chute itself. Again, close the door and press F3. This will rotate the chute under the chuck. Now you can see if you need to make any adjustment to bring the chute closer or move it further away depending on the diameter of your part or work holding. Press F3 again. The chute will rotate back to its stowed position. Open the door. Make your adjustment using a 916 box wrench. Loosen the jam nut and then adjust the bolt for the chute stop. Rotate the bolt clockwise to push the chute away from the center line of the spindle, or rotate the bolt counterclockwise to pull the chute closer to the spindle center line and then tighten the jam nut. To test, close the door, press F3 to rotate the chute up and down. Once you've satisfied with the location of the parts catcher, press F2 to send the parts catcher back to its stowed position. You can test the complete process by pressing F2. Once the adjustments are made, the parts catcher commands can be programmed with just 3M codes. These codes turn solenoids on and off, allowing air into the pneumatic cylinder to extend the parts catcher and rotate the chute towards and away from the main or second spindle. Now, let's look at how we program the parts catcher for automatic operation. Place M36 in your program right before the part off tool is called. M36 move the parts catcher forward from its stowed position and rotate the chute upwards under the workpiece. If you are parting off multiple parts quickly, you can leave the parts catcher deployed and use M35 to rotate the chute downwards while waiting for the next part off cut. Then call M36 again to bring the chute back up right before the next part off. When you're done with the parts catcher, place an M37 in your program to call it back to its stowed position. Remember to check for interference as the parting tool approaches the part and during the part off process. If you're not careful, the part off tool or tool holder can hit the parts catcher. And that's about it for adjusting and operating your parts catcher and thanks for watching.